uh, face, uh, excuse me, Facebook Live, uh, Zoom. Hello to those of you who are on Zoom. Hello to those of you who are joining us YouTube Live. Um, we come to you. Um, I'm going to teach. I'm not going to uh, preach today. I'm going to. Well, I'm going to try to teach. I, you know, I get excited. I don't. I necessarily know that you uh, run that into necessarily preaching versus teaching. Uh, but I do get a little emotional, especially this time of the year, when I talk about um, the goodness of, of God. So, uh, welcome to Faith Zone Christian Fellowship, our Good Friday service. Um, of course, we're functioning and trying to do all of this a little differently. And it is challenging not to be able to hear, you know, an amen or, um, or, or have a, you know, a, a really detailed conversation. Uh, but we're going to get this done. I believe that you uh, are joining me today and you are excited as I am. I know it seems strange to be excited about the day that Jesus sacrificed his life. But had it not been for that sacrifice, we wouldn't be here today. And so before I begin teaching, just want to um, thank you all, uh, Faith on Christian Fellowship, who continue to contribute and to sow into this ministry. I pray that God is continuing to bless you. I pray, um, um, and I'm asking uh, for those of you who do want to make a contribution, you can do so on Cash App at dollar sign, capital F, A-I-T-H, capital Z-O-N, um, or you can mail it to Faith Zone Christian Fellowship, 2306 Cragmore, C-R-A-G-M-O-R-E Road, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 27107. Um, so again, I'm excited today. We're going to um, talk about Good Friday, and I want to um, preferably will encourage you today um, as we dig into the scripture just a, a little bit here. I won't be before you long, um, but just can't let this day go by. Uh, without honoring Jesus Christ. Amen. I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for myself. Now, as it says, it says for me in my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And so that's what we're going to do today. I wish that I could sing. I would bring you a song, but I, I can't do that. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to pray and then go right into um, the word of God, if that's okay. I see you all out there on Facebook, uh, Facebook Live. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I see I have someone here on Zoom and a um, couple people on YouTube Live. So we thank you again for joining us. So let us pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity, God, to bring your word um, across the different channels on uh, the World Wide Web. And God, we thank you today for life. We thank you for our health. God, we thank you for giving us strength. And most of all, God, we thank you for your peace in this time, God, that covers us. And, and it's a kind of peace, God, that passes any all of man's understanding. It guards our heart and it guards our mind. Oh God, we thank you for that joy that is unexplainable in this time, oh Lord. God, we thank you, God, for watching over us and keeping us throughout the day, Lord. We thank you for um, all that you're doing, Lord. We may not understand everything about this moment in time, God, but we still give you praise and we still give you worship. Father, we pray for those today, Lord, who have lost their loved one. Father, that are grieving in this moment, in this hour, and they do not understand why. Father, I pray, God, that you will give them a peace right now, Lord, and that you'll give them strength to get through this time. Father, we pray, God, for those that have lost their jobs and they're not sure how they're going to make it, oh God. I know you, Lord, to be a provider, and I believe, God, that in this hour, in this time, God, you will do just that. Father, I pray if there are any out there that don't know you, never heard of you, God, uh, don't believe in you, oh Lord. Father, I pray you reveal yourself to them, oh Lord, that they will come and say, what must they do to be saved? And Father, I pray for the body of Christ, oh God, that in this time, we are being productive even now, Lord, and that in this time, we're preparing, preparing ourselves and resetting our minds, oh Lord, to, to do, Lord, uh, even greater things when we're able to leave our homes and come back to our uh, kind of great uh, fellowshipping together in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray for those that are in the hospital and I see you, God. God, I pray Lord, that you'll touch their bodies and heal them. I touch the group of the families, Lord, that are sitting at home 
and wish that they could touch their loved one's hand, oh God. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be in the emergency room. It will be in the ICU. It will be in the surgical centers, oh God. It will be in the makeshift hospitals that we've had to create, oh Lord. Father, I thank you, oh God. I know you that you're still a healer. You're still a deliverer, God. You still make ways and open doors, God. You still provide. You are still, God, uh, the balm in Gilead, oh Lord. And you're the balm that we need even now. Father, bless the nurses and the doctors and the CNAs and the security, God, and the police officers and the firemen, oh God. Bless the janitors today, oh Lord. Father, bless those that have to work the cashier at the grocery store, oh God. The stock uh, people that have to stock the shelves, the, the ones that are driving the trucks to deliver uh, the things that we need, oh Lord. Father, bless uh, everybody, not only in the United States, but all across the globe, oh God. We're asking that you will bless, God. Father, we give you the honor and the glory to Today. And I pray that as I bring this word, God, that it is not me, but it is you. And let the people hear your voice and see you, oh God, in this. Father, I pray there will be encouragement and a reminder of why Friday is so good. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Um, I just get excited in this time and I just still believe in prayer. And I'm going to tell you, if you have not... Um, if you have not uh, really tapped into prayer, I, I pray that you do so. Um, these are times um, that we should be talking to God more than we have ever talked to him before. And I believe that God does answer that he will do exceedingly abundantly above anything we could ever ask a hope for. I do believe that he's a changer. I believe he's awesome and miraculous. And so um, even in this time when we remember um, his death, um, I can't help but still just rejoice because when you think about the things that were going on today, this day um, that we call Good Friday, if you read into uh, Matthew 27, beginning about the 11th verse, um, you will begin to see um, things transpiring um, to Jesus going to the cross and then Jesus going to the cross and then him dying. And, and when you really um, begin to think about the things that Christ had to do, um, I, I look at myself as a human and just say that was such a selfless act. Um, and, and so when I, I think about a uh, uh, fleshly uh, man, even though we know he was so much more than that, but when I think about that and what he took, what his body endured, uh, what his mind endured, uh, would we even be able to comprehend such a thing? When you look at Isaiah uh, 52, beginning at um, the third verse, um, it says, it says, um, and this is, I believe, the New Living Translation I'm reading from. Uh, for this is what the Lord says when I told when I sold you into exile I received no no payment um, now I can redeem you without having to pay for you uh, this is what the sovereign Lord says long ago my people chose to live in Egypt now they are oppressed by Assyria what is this asked the Lord why are my people enslaved again those who rule them should, uh, uh, excuse me, rule them shout in exultation. My name is blasphemed all day long, but will, but I will reveal my name to my people, and they will come to know its power. Then at last they will recognize that I am the one who speaks to them. Uh, and and then in um, Matthew twenty seven, which is really what I want to talk about because it, it deals with this day. Um, in verse 11, it says, Now Jesus was standing before Pilate, the Roman governor. Are you the king of the Jews? The governor asked him, and Jesus replied, You have said it. Um, but when the leading priests and the elders made their accusations against him, Jesus remained silent. Don't you hear all these ch uh, charges they are bringing against you? Pilate demanded, but Jesus made no response to any of the charges, much to the governor's surprise. Um, now it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner to the crowd, um, anyone they wanted. This year there was, there was a notorious prisoner, a man named Barabbas. As the crowd gathered before Pilate's house that morning, he asked them, 
uh, which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah. He knew very well that the religious leaders had arrested Jesus out of envy. Just then, as Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent him the message, leave the innocent man alone. I suffered through a terrible nightmare about him last night. Um, and uh, meanwhile, the leading priest and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas to be released and for Jesus to be put to death. So the governor asked again, which of these two do you want me to release to you? And the crowd shouted, shouted uh, back, uh, Barabbas. Pilate responded, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? They shouted back, crucify him. Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, crucify him. Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he went for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And all the people yelled back, we will take responsibility for his death. And we, uh, we and our children. So Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus flogged with a lead tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. When you think about um, all that Jesus went through, just that little uh, space alone um, to be flogged with a lead tipped uh, whip, a whip that had lead at the end of it, which surely tore his skin. Um, and, and what amazes me about Jesus and, 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 and the reason that I, I praise him like uh, I've never praised him before on today and I worship him um, more than ever today because I realized that not only did he sacrifice um, uh, his life, like he didn't just um, take a quick bullet and, and die, uh, but he really had to sacrifice and go through. And, and the amazing thing is he knew that he would have to do it. He knew what he was born to do. He knew what he was built for. And yet he never, in the moment in time that it came for the sacrifice, it said he didn't say anything. He knew that he was not guilty. He knew he had done nothing wrong. But he also knew that something had to take place um, in order for uh, the people of God to experience salvation. Um, all other sacrifices just wouldn't do it. The lamb wouldn't do it. The cow wouldn't do it. Or couldn't do it, excuse me. Not wouldn't, but it couldn't. It didn't have the power. And so the only thing that could rescue us, the only thing that could save us was the blood of Jesus. Um, so I don't know about you, but I am excited today because uh, when I think about the walk he had to take, um, when I take, think about all of the, the things that people hollered at him and said to him in his moment of pain, even when he was on the cross and he was thirsty, if you read through the Bible, they didn't give him water. They gave him uh, a vinegar, something sour, something that would not quench his thirst. If you can imagine having nails through your hands and nails through your feet, um, I don't know about you, but I don't believe they were ordinary nails. They had to be a little sharper and they had to go a little deeper because your, your feet and your hands, I just just can't imagine and he didn't he had to hang there until he took his last breath so when I think about what was good about Friday uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure that for Jesus and all that he had to go through it may not have been good to him but it ought to be good to us because he uh, sacrificed his life on Calvary's cross and because he did that we are free amen we have salvation glory to God we have access when he rose um, on the third day which we'll talk about on Sunday but I'm going to talk about it even now uh, the veil was torn from top to bottom so he had purpose in what he was doing it was not just because it wasn't just because he did it because he understood if I don't carry this thing through, uh, humanity won't have a fighting chance. So I don't know about you, but Friday was mighty good to me uh, because had he not uh, hung high, had they not stretched him as far as they could, um, if they not let him and mistreated him and, and tore his skin, we wouldn't be able to say what? He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and it's every strike that he took 
that lead whip, uh, every time they hit him, there's healing in that strike. Uh, so if they hit him once, that's healing. And so I believe that even for uh, coronavirus, for COVID-19, uh, there was a strike uh, that he took for us. He took a strike for us, uh, that he shed blood for us for even this very moment in time. And so I, I, I said I was just teaching, but I got excited when I began to read the word of God and begin to read, just think in my mind that uh, if I could be there, uh, just imagining this man, uh, this bloody flesh walking um, uh, uh, to be hung, uh, to be killed as a criminal when he was uh, not a criminal, but he was actually a king. I, I can't imagine, uh, I, I can't even imagine for myself if it were me dying for people that did not care, dying for people that didn't love me, uh, dying for people that didn't care. Uh, but I, I thank God that he's better than us. Uh, I thank God that he looked for far beyond us. I thank God that he did what he was called to do. So what am I saying to us today? That we have purpose uh, in our lives and yet we get upset uh, at the smallest complaint or we get upset at the hint uh, that they won't accept us. Uh, we get upset when things don't go our way. Uh, but I'm excited today and I want to encourage you today uh, that remember uh, what we're going through is nothing uh, like what Christ went through. Uh, but glory to God, I'm excited today uh, because he was wounded uh, for our transgressions. Uh, so there was purpose. He hung uh, for our transgressions. Uh, there's mercy, uh, daily mercy, uh, brand new mercies every day because of Calvary's cross. Uh, so again, if he didn't do it, uh, if he had come down from the cross, if he had used his power to save himself as uh, hallelujah, many of us would have done, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't have the ability to pray to God in the name of Jesus and experience the things that we experience, the answers to our prayers, the healing for our bodies, the comfort for our families. And I don't know about you, this peace in a troubled time. Uh, I don't know about you, but I don't have any worries. I don't have any cares. I don't have any concerns because I know that God will provide. He will take care of me. He will not fail me. He cannot lie. Um, and so I, I know that everything is going to be all right. Uh, I don't worry about how I'm going to survive because the same way he went on Calvary's cross and saved me, glory to God is the same way he's going to save me now. Amen. So I give God all the praise and honor today. I, I, I'm just excited when I read the word of God. I, but the thing that we got to really get excited about is when he said it's finished, uh, he took his last breath as a human. Uh, but glory to God, the good news is he didn't die. It wasn't over, right? So on Friday, he took his last breath uh, and he said it is finished. Uh, but what was finished was that part uh, was finished, uh, but there was still more to come because at the third day, he would get up and then with all power in his hand, he didn't just walk out of a tomb uh, powerless, but he walked out with power. Uh, and, I, and I get excited about that. I know we're on Friday, but it's something about Friday I get excited about and then it brings me into Sunday because I can imagine they wrapped him up and put him in a tomb and, and they and they they rolled the stone on the, on the tomb, uh, thinking that that was enough to keep our Jesus uh, uh, out. They, that was enough to kill him. Uh, but something tells me, like something tells me now, that even though they said they didn't believe, even though they said it wouldn't happen, there was something in them that said, just in case, uh, put some soldiers by the tomb. Okay? And so I got excited because uh, you were afraid of my Jesus uh, because something in you told you uh, that they were wrong. And even though he was lifeless, uh, when you took him off of the cross, uh, you knew that there was a time coming where that lifeless body would be whole. Come on, somebody. And so we're whole today because he's whole. Uh, so I, I dare you, uh, whatever sickness is in your body, whoever is sick around you, that you begin to call on the one that hung high and stretched wide. Uh, every drop of blood that came from our father's body, it, it came for us. Uh, I believe there was a drop for cancer and there was a drop for HIV and there was a drop for COVID-19 and there was a drop for the flu and there was a drop for pneumonia. I don't care what it is. There was a drop for addiction. I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you today that God death really brought life to us. Amen. So that what was that's what Good Friday is really all about. Uh, Good Friday 
say it's good to me because I believe Satan was celebrating on Friday, not understanding that on Sunday his demise would come. Come on, somebody. I'm excited about that today. I'm, I get excited when I think about how defeated the enemy was on Friday uh, because on Friday he was excited. I believe he threw a party. I believe he invited people to come out and celebrate with him uh, because he thought he had done something. He finally had killed the king of kings and the lord of lords. He thought he actually took him out. He wasn't smart enough to realize that the king of kings and the lord of lords had all power in his hand and could not be defeated. Come on. He was an undefeated God and he still is. The same God that rose on the third day is the same God we have today. So I'm excited. I can't hardly sit in this seat right now because I'm thinking about how good God is. I'm thinking about the fact that I can go to my father right now and ask him for whatever it is that I need and he'll do just what I ask. So I don't know about you. I, if you're feeling sad, I want you to, to sit up straight in your chair I, and just begin to wave your hand and say, God, I thank you. I, though I don't feel like it in the world, today, if you are part of the body of Christ, where is your love? Where is your power? And where is your sound mind? Uh, because fear is not something that we embrace. Fear is not something that can uh, keep us down. Fear is not something that, that controls us because uh, we, we serve a God. I, I, I want you to just think about it, and, and I'm getting ready to close, but I just want you to think about it. I'm, when, I, when I close my eyes and just imagine a bloody man uh, 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 being beaten and, and not saying a mumble of word and just on his way to Calvary's cross, he had to have some help to get there because his body was so weak and torn from all of the violent things they had done to him. I don't even think we can imagine what his body looked like at that point. And then not only that, he let them nail him to a cross. And I keep saying that because I can't imagine anybody nailing my hands and my feet to a cross and dying for worthless people. I know you don't want to hear that because we think that we're worthy. We think that we're deserving. Uh, but that's why it's called unmerited favor because you didn't earn it. Uh, it is not something that you deserve, but it's something that he's given. It's a gift. Uh, so I just want to encourage you today. Don't let this thing take your smile. Don't let this thing bring fear into your life uh, to where you're paralyzed. Uh, know who you are and know whose you are. I am a child of the living God. I will proclaim that that is what I am. I will not shut up. I will not be quiet. And yes, we will continue to use every channel available to us to bring the word of God because that's what I believe God would want. Uh, he wants us to talk about his death. He wants us to talk about his life. And most of all, he definitely wants us to talk about his resurrection because I need you to understand that it did not stop at Friday. Okay, so we're not serving a dead God, but we're serving a living God. It didn't stop on Saturday. 
Uh, it, it didn't even stop really on Sunday, uh, but he rose on the third day on Sunday. And so I'm excited today. I'm excited now. I'm not going to keep you though, uh, but because I, I, I'm going to worship even after we cut the cameras off because I love the Lord. And I don't know about you. He's so worthy of my praise and my worship. And I mean it when I say he doesn't do anything else. Um, he's done enough for me. He woke me up this morning. Anybody? Uh, my, uh, my body is healed. My family family is blessed. I, I may not have millions in the bank, uh, uh, but glory to God, I've got God uh, and that's enough for me. That means that every need I have will be met. Somebody needs to hear tonight that I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor see the bad bread. Uh, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Somebody, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor see the bad bread. I don't care what the job said. I don't care what the test Said. I don't care what the bills are saying. I need you to understand that Jesus, uh, he paid it all. Every debt I owe, every debt you owe, it's going to be all right. Uh, but you got to have a mustard size seed of faith. Uh, mustard size seed, mustard seed size of faith, excuse me. Uh, and, and, and trust God. And that's not very big. A mustard seed is very, very little. So you don't have to have an enormous amount of faith uh, to call on God and to know um, that he will deliver. Just know that he is God and that he will not fail. I need you to know tonight that he did go to Calvary's cross, uh, that he does exist. I need you to know that he was born of a virgin and that he did suffer uh, on the cross and that he did rise on the third day. And if you can believe that with me, uh, then you can be saved. Uh, the Bible tells us that, um, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and I, I, I'm here to tell you that I, I just I want everybody if I could get everybody saved it would be all right with me uh, but I need you to know in this season if you don't know him I want you to come to know him uh, if you've never heard of him then then inbox me or say something on Facebook or say something on Zoom or, or YouTube live talk to me so that we can can get you to the Father because I'm not talking religion, okay? But I'm talking relationship. Uh, there was a relationship between us and God and then there's a relationship between man and man and that is your cross, amen? And so I want to encourage you if you don't know him, now is the time. I want you to know him. I, I wish I could reach out and touch each and every one of you, but I want you to know him. It's so important because he was wounded for you. And I feel like somebody out there is saying, not me. You don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know the mistakes I've made. But baby, let me help you understand. We've all fallen short. We continue to fall short. But when he went to Calvary's cross, it was so that we would have access to something called mercy, something called grace. And it's necessary. And it's extended to you if you'll come to know him. So I just ask you today, do you know the Lord? Is he a part of your life? Uh, have you accepted him? Does he abide in you? I'm not asking you, uh, are you ready? I'm not asking you to get ready. I'm not asking you what you've done. What I'm asking you is, do you know him? Does he live in your heart? Because that's what's important. I need you to understand that's what's important is do you know him? Uh, the past is the past. And that's, let me tell you something about God. God, what I love about God is he forgets. Uh, he'll throw it to a sin forgetfulness. This is the word. To remember it no more. So unlike man, he doesn't bring it up anymore. When you repent of your sin and turn from that thing, God doesn't remember it anymore. And that is something to be excited about today. So I can't let today go. I can't close out all of these uh, channels until I offer the greatest gift that I can give anybody. It's better than a vaccine, let me tell you. His name is Jesus. And he loves you. Even where you are right now, he loves you. In whatever state you're in, he loves you. And I just want to reach out. I, 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 I wish I could see the face of, that's calling on him right now. But just know that we're touching and agreeing with you. Uh, that we love you wherever you are. Uh, and I want you to be saved. Uh, and so I, I just ask that you'll... Uh, just just go to God. You don't have to have an elaborate prayer. You don't have to have a big vocabulary. You can just say, Jesus, here I am. Uh, in all of my unrighteousness, here I am. Uh, and, and I come to you just as I am. And I'm asking you to come into my heart, to come into my life. I believe, God, that you 
you were born of a virgin and, and I believe that you suffered on the cross and, and God I believe uh, that you rose on the third day and I believe that you live today uh, and so I'm asking that you will come into my life in Jesus name and that's all you got to do and then you just got to believe and then I pray that as you believe you'll continue to talk to him every day because it's a relationship uh, just like your friendships just like uh, your relationships with man or with woman it takes work and so you, you got to talk to him it's, it's not a deep thing. It's a relational thing. You got to relate, okay? You got to have conversation. You got to read his word. Study to show yourself approved, not unto man, but unto God. And that's what I love about him. It's about a relationship between him and I, between you and him. And so I give God the glory today, and I pray that it's blessed you. I pray that, that God will do exceedingly abundantly above anything you can ever ask a hope for. I pray that right now, wherever you are, whatever your circumstance is, and I pray that days after today, somebody will hear this and it will bless them. And I want to say right now, I want us to pray corporately, everybody, for that woman that is in a domestic violence situation, for that child that is being abused, for that one that is hungry, that is homeless, for the one that is going through like we can never imagine. Uh, I want us to pray sincerely for those people uh, because they're stuck in a home. They're stuck in a place uh, that they have no refuge. Uh, but I want to pray that God will send an angel by, that God will bring rescue in the name of Jesus. Uh, I don't know about you, but I believe God is omnipresent uh, and he's omniscient and he's omnipotent. He's greater uh, than anything we can ever imagine. And I believe that at the fist that's rising up to the person, oh God, that you'll remove it, that you'll to decrease the temper in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we give you the glory right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you because you are God and you are God alone. Oh Father, we ask God that you bless that child, oh God, that's missing. Lord, bless the family that is looking for them, God. Bless the one, God, that's dealing with abuse. Uh, everyone that's dealing with abuse, oh God, go home to home. Family to family, God, and begin to mend the situation, God. Father, I pray right now for every sick body. I pray for every sick mind, God. I pray for every addiction today in the name of Jesus because I know I've got at least two or three touching and agreeing with me right now, oh God. And I pray, Lord, that you will move mightily on the behalf of this earth, of this world, of these states, God, in the name of Jesus. Give the governing bodies, God, a wisdom in this thing, oh Lord. Father, I pray that you'll bless every business, God, that is trying to take care of their employees in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, that you'll bless not only the kingdom, but those that don't know you. Give us, God, a boldness, God, to go out and tell people about you, Lord. To go all over the airways and the telephone lines, uh, wherever we can, God, to reach out and let them know that Jesus uh, still saves in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we glorify you today. We magnify your name. And we worship you because you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords. Uh, you are Alpha and Omega, beginning and You are healer. You are deliverer, oh, God. You are provider. God, you are God, and we love you today, Jesus. Bless every ear that is attached to the phone, every eye that is attached to the screen. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit go into their home in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we glorify you. Every need met, oh, God, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Glory to God. I thank God for each of you. I thank you for taking out time from your day to come and join in with me and I pray that the word has blessed you and I mean sincerely that I love you I love each and every one I may have never met you I may not know you but I love you uh, because it's the love that Jesus has placed in my heart I told you he said he gave me power he gave me love and he gave me a sound mind and who would I be uh, if I couldn't love a stranger because Jesus died for a whole bunch of strangers um, that didn't even know him. but now Praise God because we're part of the body of Christ. Uh, we're known as his brothers and his sisters. Uh, I don't know about you, but there's no friend like the, like Jesus. Amen. So glory to God. I give you praise. I praise God. I thank you for joining us today. I hope to see you on Sunday morning for uh, Resurrection Sunday at 11 a.m. Um, the same information that you use today, you will use on Sunday. And I know that Bishop Bradshaw will bring a mighty, mighty word. Uh, so you all have a blessed evening and happy Resurrection Weekend.